In our last video, we introduced the concepts of absolute and comparative advantage, which are fundamental to understanding how countries should determine what they should specialize in and what they should trade for with other countries. We determined that the United States has a comparative advantage in the production of apples because the opportunity cost of apples, in terms of the number of smartphones given up, is lower than it is for South Korea. On the other hand, we established that South Korea has the comparative advantage in the production of smartphones since it must give up fewer apples for every smartphone that it produces. In this video, we're going to expand on this concept to talk about how specialization in trade can be mutually beneficial for the countries that choose to participate in it. At the end of our last video, we put two points on our production possibilities curve indicating where each country should produce based on the principle of comparative advantage. The United States, because it has a comparative advantage in apple production, might benefit from allocating all of its resources towards the production of apples and producing down here on its production possibilities curve. It will produce 39 apples but zero smartphones. South Korea, on the other hand, because it has a comparative advantage in smartphone production, should produce up here on its PPC, allocating all of its resources towards the 12 smartphones it can produce and none of its resources towards apples. The problem in this situation, of course, is that South Koreans have lots of technology, but no food, and Americans have lots of food, but no technology. The solution to this problem, not surprisingly, lies in trade. The idea that countries should specialize in trade is fundamental in international economics. The idea can be articulated as follows. If a country produces the good for which it has the comparative advantage over another country and trades with the other country, for the goods it has comparative advantage in, total potential consumption in both countries can be increased beyond what is possible without trade. In other words, both countries can gain from trading with one another in order to acquire the goods that they do not produce domestically. How do we illustrate these gains from trade on a production possibilities diagram? That's what we're going to talk about next. In order for both countries to gain from trade, they must be able to acquire the good that they are not producing at a lower opportunity cost than it would cost them to produce it domestically. In other words, for the United States, which is specializing in Apple production, it must be able to get smartphones for less than three apples. If the United States can trade for smartphones by selling South Korea fewer than three apples per smartphone, then the United States will have gained from trade. Likewise, if South Korea is able to get apples for a price from the United States lower than the domestic price of 0.5 smartphones, then South Korea stands to gain from trade as well. The trick, therefore, is determining an exchange rate, so to speak, between apples and smartphones that benefits both countries. The concept we're talking about here can be called the real exchange rate. Usually when we talk about exchange rates, we're referring to currencies. We're talking about the price of one currency expressed in terms of another currency. But in our simple production possibilities analysis here, currencies have no role. In fact, what is being traded is apples and smartphones. So the exchange rate here refers to the price of apples in terms of smartphones and vice versa. In other words, we're talking about the opportunity cost. If the two countries can agree on a price for apples and smartphones that is mutually beneficial, in other words, allows each country to acquire the other good from the other country at a price lower than what it would cost to produce domestically, then both countries can gain from trade. For example, if South Korea were able to import apples from the United States at some price lower than 0.5 smartphones per apple, then South Korea could gain from trade. For example, if one apple were to cost South Korea just 0.4 smartphones, that would be better than the domestic opportunity cost of apples. What exchange rate would 1A equals 4S correspond with in terms of smartphones? Let's find out how many apples each smartphone would cost if one apple cost four smartphones. We can divide both sides by four, and what we get is a per smartphone price of apples of 2.5. How does that compare to America's domestic price of smartphones? 
Domestically, America has to give up three apples in order to produce one smartphone. But if Americans could get smartphones from South Korea at a price of just 0.2 apples, then America could stand to gain from trade. So what we have determined here is that the exchange rate of one apple equals 0.4 smartphones and one smartphone equals 2.5 apples could be mutually beneficial to both South Korea and America because both of these values are lower than what the countries face domestically in order to produce the good that they are not specializing in. Let's use these exchange rates to illustrate the potential gains from trade that South Korea and America would enjoy on their production possibilities curves. So now South Korea chooses to produce 12 smartphones domestically but zero apples. However, it is able to trade each of those smartphones for 2.5 apples, whereas domestically it would have only received two apples per smartphone that it gave up. So now, instead of either producing 12 smartphones or 24 apples, South Korea is able to trade all of its smartphones for as many as 12 times 2.5, which equates to 30 apples. Through specialization and trade, South Korea is therefore able to consume up to 30 apples, whereas without trade it could have consumed up to only 24 apples. This is because South Korea can now trade each of its smartphones for 2.5 apples from the United States, which is better than the potential output it could have achieved without trade. What happens therefore is South Korea's production possibilities curve essentially shifts out to the dotted red line. How about the United States? The United States is going to produce 39 apples domestically, which it can trade at an exchange rate of 0.4 smartphones per apple, which is better than the 0.33 smartphones America would have gotten if it had produced smartphones domestically. So the U.S. can produce 40 apples and trade these at an exchange rate of 0.4. Now the United States can produce either 40 apples or trade all of its apples for up to 16 smartphones. The United States production possibilities curve has essentially shifted out because of specialization in trade. It's now able to consume at a point beyond what it could have consumed when it was producing apples and smartphones both domestically. The dashed green line represents America's new trading possibilities curve resulting from specialization in trade with South Korea. What we get in the end from trade is an increase in the production possibilities of both South Korea and the United States. Of course, the countries can't actually produce more of both goods now. However, they will be able to consume more of both goods thanks to specialization. The new PPCs indicated by the shifts out caused by trade represent the combination of goods that Americans and South Koreans are now able to consume thanks to trade. A point such as this, I'll call that point X, would not have been possible for South Korea when it was trying to produce both apples and cell phones. Likewise, a point such as this, which I'll call point Y, would not have been possible for America when it was producing both apples and cell phones. However, when America specializes in apples and South Korea specializes in cell phones and they trade with one another, points X and Y are now possible. Hence, trade has increased the standard of living of the average American and South Korean. The analysis we've done here is, of course, very simplified. Not all trade between countries benefits everybody within those countries. However, the concepts at the core of this analysis of comparative advantage and specialization are very important in understanding how trade takes place between countries in the real world. Not all smartphones are made in South Korea, and not all apples are grown in America. However, it is true that America tends to specialize in the production of certain agricultural goods, whereas South Korea tends to specialize in the production of certain high-tech goods. Why each country specializes in each category of goods, of course, has to do with the endowment of resources with which each country finds itself. South Korea has lots of high-skilled workers and lots of capital. America has lots of land. Land is suitable for growing apples. Capital and high-skilled workers are suitable for producing cell phones. So the idea here is that comparative advantage should determine how resources are allocated within a country when that country wishes to gain from trade with other countries. When a particular nation specializes in the goods for which it has a comparative advantage in trades with other countries for the goods that they produce domestically, total consumption within a country of all goods can be increased. There is no doubt that trade between nations has increased the standards of livings of people across countries over time. 
and allowed us to consume goods that we would not have been able to produce domestically or that we could have produced domestically, but only at a very high opportunity cost, which generally translates to much higher prices as well.